Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to share with you how I made my first set of cards using the February 2020 sheet load of cards printable. I hope you'll stick around and see how I made them. Thank you so much for stopping by. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here. So yesterday I stopped by and shared with you my very first set of cards using the latest sheet load of cards. This is the February 2020 issue and in this one I am going to yield six cards. Now if you've been around sheet load for a while you know that six is not a normal number for me. Usually more it's eight to twelve cards with a sheet load but I really like the way that this layout worked and because of the sizes of the papers I couldn't get as many cards from one sheet load as I wanted to. But later, I will talk to you about how you could double the sheet load of cards if you do want to make more cards. If you're a subscriber and want to know how you can download this issue for free, make sure to watch yesterday's video where I debuted it. I will have instructions there how you can do that. Also, if you want to share one of your sheet load of cards with me, I have a video that tells you the ways that you can do that. I call it Show Us Your Sheet Load, and you can share on YouTube, on Instagram, or by sending a card to my P.O. Box. So I will have that video linked below as well. Before I get started with the process, I wanted to go over some of the products and tools that I'll be using. If I add anything later on, I will make sure to let you know. Also, once I go to the process, this will be a voiceover, so make sure that if I leave you with any questions that you leave those in the comments section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. For today's card, I will be using the February 2020 issue, the sketch and supply list, and the cutting guides file, which I do want to point out this month that I've changed it up a little bit because of a request from my friend Danny. She had all of her sheet loads printed out, and then her cat Alyssa, I believe, got to the pile and spread them all over the floor, and she then didn't know which first page went with the second page. So what I've done here, I do have the month on both pages now. Hopefully that will help you out as well. For my sentiment, I am using a new to me stamp set from Unity Stamp Company. This one is called Brody's Love. This was on sale last month for only $10 and I think it was regularly $26 or $28. So I picked this up because I just fell in love with the sympathy sentiments in this set. So that's what I'm going to be creating today are some sympathy cards. I really don't have any of those on hand, so I thought it would be something good to make. I will be stamping those sentiments in Gina K Designs ink. I pulled out Peach Bellini and Sea Glass because I think those go well with the patterned papers that I chose today. You will notice later that my sentiments are larger than what would fit on this CS2 piece that I have allotted, but if you look at the cutting guides, there was a lot of extra CS2. So that is one of the great things about sheet loads. You can adjust things like that to make it work for your stamps or what you have. I will be using the white cardstock for that. You might have already noticed that this is the first issue that I have included an embellishment idea for you. Behind the sentiment block are some ovals. I just did that to represent maybe a twine nest. I thought that might add something to the card because it is pretty basic. For that though today, I didn't have any string or twine that I thought would go well with this. So I got out this Tim Holtz die and it just makes kind of like a fake twine nest. It's just a die. So I plan on using this with my vellum paper. I thought that would add something, but then it doesn't take away too much from that background pattern paper since you can kind of see through it. This is a 28 pound vellum, so it's the medium weight that I own. I will link it below if you want to check it out. 
For my pattern papers, I'm going to be using a couple pieces from this Meant to be Hot by pad from Michaels. I have chosen this floral and this speckled piece. Since they are sympathy cards, I wanted to keep them kind of subdued, and I liked the way that this piece looked with this. And you'll notice later that I'm hoping my inks match kind of this color and the peachy color in the paper. And then finally, for my cardstock mats, which is CS1, when I was at Michael's picking up that paper pad, I found some Martha Stewart cardstock. This is the Buttercup, and it's just kind of a shimmery yellow. I'll see if I can get that to show up on camera there. Not too much sparkle, but I thought it looked nice with the paper. Besides this, I will also have three pieces of white cardstock that I cut and fold into card bases. Let's get crafty! As with most of my process videos, I'm going to start by getting as much of the cutting done as I can. So the first thing I'm going to be cutting are both pieces of the pattern paper. And according to the cutting guides on the sheet load of cards file, these pieces both get cut to the same dimensions. Now I'm not going to go over those dimensions here or many of the specifics on what I cut my papers to because once you have downloaded that sheet load of cards file you're going to know what sizes and how to cut everything. Speaking of that I don't think that I mentioned in the pre-recorded intro that if you would like to download this file for yourself you do need to be a subscriber to my channel but all you have to do is go and watch yesterday's video to find out how you can download that file for free. It is linked below and I will have it linked at the end of this video. Since my sentiments are too large for the given dimensions for CS2, I am just going to cut down my white cardstock into strips for stamping onto later. That way I can adjust the height to whatever is needed for each of the stamps. So what I did is I cut two strips of white cardstock here. The first one was three and a half inches and the second one was two and a half inches. Once that was done, I did kind of the same thing with the vellum. I measured the die that I was going to be using and then I cut a couple strips of that vellum that that die would fit onto later for die cutting. And off camera I cut and folded my six white card bases. Once all of that cutting was done, I started assembling the cards. The first step was to put all of my PPA pieces just straight down onto that card front centered. And then once I had all of those ready, I matted my PPB pieces with the yellow card stock. And then I placed those onto the card fronts with some foam tape squares from the Dollar Tree. You'll notice on the first one that I only put down four of the tape squares, one in each corner. But from then on, I did actually end up using five. I put one in the middle as well, just so there was a little extra sturdiness there for mailing and for longevity of the cards. Next step was to die cut my faux twine nest using the die. I did end up cutting two layers of vellum at one time, and I do have to say that this was probably the trickiest part of the whole card. It wasn't awful, but you did have to take out a few of those pieces on the inside of the die cut. Next, I pulled out my trusty Misty, and because these are rubber stamps with the foam backing, I did pull out the mouse pad. I grabbed my skinniest piece of cardstock for the first few stamps. I decided which two that I would stamp on there, and then I inked my stamps up first in the Peach Bellini ink and stamped those onto the cardstock. Once I had those all set, I turned my cardstock around, quickly cleaned off my stamps with some stamp cleaning wipes that I get at Joann's, and then I inked it up with the sea glass and stamped another set. I did then that same exact thing for the last two stamps, but this time I just used the wider cardstock strips. 
Once I had all of those stamped, I pulled out my new Fiskars photo trimmer and I used the plastic guide bar. If you have one of these or if you have other trimmers similar to this, you'll know that there are always some kind of like notches or ledges in that plastic piece that holds the paper down. And what I did is I just used one of those lines to line up a certain area on my sentiment and then I trimmed those down so they all had even borders. This new little tool to me made these nice and quick and easy and I didn't have to get out my big bulky trimmer. Once the sentiments were cut down, I did choose six that I wanted to put on my cards today, and then I started putting my die cuts behind them. I just added a little adhesive to the back of the sentiment, and then I pushed that vellum die cut into the adhesive. You'll notice that on some of these, I arranged the circle more portrait, and then on some, I arranged it more landscape. It just depended on the height of the sentiments that I used. To add these to my cards, I pulled out my big blue roll of foam tape. I love this stuff for fine little pieces like this. I do have it linked in my description box below if you want to check it out. While I was putting these together, if the floral pattern was in the background, I used the peach bellini sentiment to pull those flowers out, and if the speckled paper was in the background, then I used one of the sea glass sentiments on the card. And then I just continued this process until all six cards had a sentiment. I did want to keep these cards pretty subtle, but I did pull out my new Shimmery Crystal Effects Tube from Stampin' Up, and I tried to add little drops. I added them like I would with Nuvo drops, but honestly, once I let them dry, you really couldn't even see them. Can you let me know if you have this, how you add this to your cards, because I think it's supposed to be pretty glittery, and mine really just ended up like a clear blob. And here is a close-up look at the finished cards. If you enjoyed getting to see how I made my first set of cards with the February 2020 sheet load of cards, I hope that you'll give this video a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools that I use in the video, I do have some links in the description box.